After losing the NFC Championship game, most people thought that was the last we would see of Jimmy G in that Niner red. Even the quarterback himself admitted he was most likely gone. We've seen many quarterback dominoes fall so far this season, but Jimmy G still with the team with Trey Lance waiting in the wings. Kyle Shanahan says the Niners are still in no rush to trade Garoppolo. We brought Trey here to be that eventually, um, and I think that'll be sooner than later. But um, when Jimmy gets his surgery and um, we can't upgrade our team by getting some good picks until the surgery, until people feel good about that, I'm all right with that. I mean, we're not just getting rid of him to get rid of him. All right, Nick back with us and Mike T as well. Dominique, what do you think? Does Jimmy G or Trey Lance give San Francisco the best chance to win? I think it has to be Trey Lance. And there's a lot of question marks about how good Trey Lance can be. But um, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan traded away more than three first-round picks to get up to get Trey Lance. So that suggests to me that, that they didn't think Jimmy G was the answer. And no matter what they thought, we watched last year. Like, we've watched Jimmy G play. And we all know the feeling that we had in the closing minutes of close games is that Jimmy G was not the answer. He is not the type of quarterback that is going to take them over the edge to being a guaranteed championship contender. And I do think that he's good enough to, to, to be carried. Like, he's not going to destroy that team. He proved that by getting them to a Super Bowl several years ago. Like, he's not going to crush that team. But it seemed like in those big moments when you need someone to make a big play, he was unable to do it. And Trey Lance is not going to get better by sitting on the bench. So it might be a rougher regular season this year, and it may be a rough season altogether. But I think putting Trey Lance on the field and letting him improve gives them the best chance to win a championship, if not this year, then the next. Yeah, I totally disagree with Nick. Jimmy hmm. G is 31 and 14 as a starter. They average 28 points a game when he's playing quarterback. And over the last couple of years, took him to the Super Bowl, almost beat Kansas City. And in the championship game, if Jarski Tart catches that punt from Matt Stafford, they're back in another Super Bowl. So I don't think he's perfect by any stretch. And I really like Trey Lance a lot, but he's a massive question mark. You have a team that's ready to win right now, not in a year, not two years, right now. And Jimmy G is a more established veteran quarterback. And while we think Trey Lance may be really good one day, for this season, I'm hard pressed to understand why the 49ers would ever move on from Jimmy G. I would keep him, I would start him, I would probably give Trey Lance some reps here and there, but no question in 2022, oh. Jimmy G is the best you quarterback for the 49ers. You start him because that's how you get better. You get better by playing. You only get better by sitting on the bench. And by running, platooning two quarterbacks, I think that takes away from both of them. Like, that's practice time that Jimmy G is not getting if he's your starter. And Trey Lance is not getting the full attention that he needs if he's a starter. So I don't think that platooning them is the smart move. Maybe putting in some sort of red zone package for Trey Lance or a third or fourth down package for Trey Lance is one thing. But I would say, first of all, QB wins, like, come on, we're past that as a stat. Like, QB wins is not a stat that anyone that cares about football respects. And second of all, the Super Bowl that they got him, to, that that the 49ers took Jimmy Garoppolo to, he threw an interception with his eyes closed just before halftime. Like, let's not forget that that happened. And last year, yes, if Joukowsky Tart catches that interception, they're back in the Super Bowl. But let's also remember he threw for less than 200 yards in two playoff games, less than 200 yards in two interceptions in two playoff games. The championship game, he had over 200 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. One of those touchdowns was a screen pass that he threw to Debo Samuel that he took for a 44-yard touchdown. So we can um, like cherry pick particular numbers and QB stats and pretend like Jimmy G is the answer. But Jimmy G is seems to me last year when we were all watching, I remember sitting there knowing that they needed something from Jimmy G watching that Cowboys game that yes, they won, but they needed Jimmy G to make plays and he missed wide open um, receivers on back to back occasions in the fourth quarter. They needed him to make plays in San Francisco and he threw an interception on a late out route against or not in San Francisco in Green Bay at Green Bay. Like these are things that happened not that long ago. And you can point to Jimmy G having success, but I would say that Jimmy G was a passenger. He wasn't steering that. And when they need something from him, he hasn't done it. I'm not here to guarantee that Trey Lance can do it, but there's a question. Maybe Trey Lance can do it. 
We already know the answer is that Jimmy G might close his eyes and throw an interception in the biggest game of his life. He might throw a red zone pick against the, the Green Bay Packers. He might also miss wide open receivers. Like we can point to the numbers okay. here and there, but we can also point to the, the, um, the actual things that happen. Mike T, is it fair to call Jimmy G a passenger? Because you could also argue he didn't cost yeah. them Super Bowls, right? Yeah, he's not a passenger. He's more of like a car that can self-drive at times. And context <laughs> is everything here, which is I understand that the quarterback stat of wins mm -hmm. is not a one-size-fits-all approach. But in this situation, Jimmy G with Kyle Shanahan, sometimes the best thing you could do offensively is run the ball or punt, not turn the ball over. And the question is, Trey Lance or Jimmy G this year? It's not Jimmy G versus the world, because I'm not saying he's a world beater, but I'm saying in this situation, it's worked for a long time. And in some of those games, Nick, that, for example, the Green Bay playoff game, Aaron Rodgers was struggling in the same conditions that Jimmy G was. And I think he has a really good feel for this offense. He understands where, again, some long handoffs to Debo Samuel. I know that inflates his statistics, but it's still a positive play for the offense. And the whole notion of having a small package for Trey Lance, I'll say this. On some of the great Jet teams we've had that went to championship games, there were small packages for guys like Brad Smith. And working with Rex Ryan, who had a defensive uh, background, he would say that really hurt preparation from a standpoint that even though it may be a 15-play package, it takes away from your preparation. So I think a small package for Trey Lance only enhances the overall offense of the 49ers. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Molly. No, go ahead. I was just going to ask you, because you weren't in the conversation earlier, where you have the Niners in the NFC. Because when we asked Rob, he had them third, he had the Packers fifth, and then uh, Mike even had the Cowboys ahead of the Packers as well. Yeah, I heard the Cowboys. That, that surprised me, considering what's happening to them this, this offseason. But, I, I mean, I think the Niners... The Niners are at the top of a very weak conference. I could see the Niners winning if they move on from Jimmy G. So I think third is a good place for them. But I, I would say to the idea of having a Jimmy G, or excuse me, a Trey Lance package, like I agree with that. I just don't agree with the idea that you can platoon them in and give them both practice time. Like you need to need to install that package in camp and then not practice again because it forces defenses to prepare for it. But if you have to practice it every week, that is also taking away from your preparation time for your quarterback. And if you can consider Jimmy G anything other than a passenger, I don't know. Like the win stat, it's a beautiful stat. It's fun. But let's think about who was playing quarterback for them when Jimmy G was not in there. They were people who are not NFL starters. So it's not like you're dropping him into a situation that he's being compared to a, a legitimate starter. These were like um, Nick Mullins, like guys like that. No disrespect to them, but that's not the type of quarterback you want to win a championship with. So I think that we know Jimmy G ceiling and Jimmy G ceiling is throwing interceptions in the red zone, throwing wow. interceptions in the Super Bowl and not elevating his team. You need a quarterback in the modern NFL, as we've seen, you look at the quarterbacks who have won and competed, it's possible to win without one of those quarterbacks, but you need a guy that's going to make a play, a big play at a moment when it's not expected. We've yet to see Jimmy G do that. We don't know if Trey Lance can or can't, but at least there's some hope that he could. Yeah, and self-driving cars don't always, don't always make Yeah, I don't, I don't trust them. You need to, you need to look at the stats. Don't always accelerate. Accelerate the way, you, the way you're looking for. It's kind of a steady pace. Okay. All right. Uh, so to come here on First Take, it's the return that had everybody talking. TV 12 coming out of retirement for another shot at a Super Bowl number eight. But do we want to see him hoisting his eighth Lombardi? We get into it. Speaking of returns, did you see Tiger?